What's up everyone, Steve here from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7 here with another unboxing and in-depth look at this awesome King Tiger hang long tank. Now if you've been watching my videos recently you've been noticing that I've been unboxing a few. I've done the Tiger 1, the Yag Panther and now the King Tiger. Now without a doubt the King Tiger is my favourite tank of all time. World War 1, World War 2, modern times, it doesn't matter. King Tiger is always on top of my list. I just think it looks amazing and when it came out in like 1944, it looks awesome. Now imagine it back then. Now I got this from Banggood, so go check it out. Same as the Yag Panther, they also have the Tiger, they have uh, Abrams, a Sherman, a KV-1, and a few other tanks as well, all for a fantastic price. I think it's around about 120 US dollars or about 160 Australian dollars, which is crazy considering it's a 116 scale tank, BB firing, it's got a smoke unit on there, and it looks awesome. If you don't if you use it too much for an RC, you can just put it on your shelf and it looks good as a model. Stick around, I'll unbox it, show you where you get inside and do a good in-depth overview of the tank itself and show you some of the driving functions as well. So what I have here is a 116 scale 2.4 gigahertz Porsche turret. German King Tiger. And you might have not known but there is two types of turrets available. There is a Porsche turret which I have and there is a hench one which is kind of more angular. Okay, like normal, let's have a quick look around the box. As you can see on this side, it's got a nice cutaway version of the tank. Very nice, I like how Heng Long is doing all this to uh, a lot of their tanks, it's very good. And also a brief description about the King Tiger tank. So I guess you can pause the video there if you'd like to give it that bit of a read, but I'll, I'll fill you in on some of the info later on. Yeah, the long side of the box, you have this beautiful uh, side view of the tank. It looks awesome. I like how it's kind of integrated with the black and the uh, camera looks cool quick pick of the remote control and the updated 2.4 gigahertz version looks very nice much simpler and works much much better than the old fm radio now on the other side you can see the different versions you can get or the upgrades so you've got the basic uh, plastic gear zinc alloy gear and then the steel gear which obviously is the hardest you can get metal tracks and all that kind of good stuff as well now in the bottom of the box just give you some info about the tank itself 644 millimeters long 235 mil wide and the height of 200 millimeters it is BB firing, which is awesome. It has six millimeter BB shells and has a firing range for approximately 25 meters. It says here when it's hopped up. And this tank looks very nice. I do like the three tone camo look. And I said this in previous uh, videos, especially on the Yag Panther, the quality of the airbrushing or the actual painting on these hanglongs has improved dramatically. It does look very good and uh, yeah look once you weather these up with a nice wash over the whole tank it looks so much better. Even some pin detailing and some chipping it would look really really good but saying that just from you know first appearance brand new tank rolling out of a factory it does look really nice. So I'll put this aside we'll have a look at the accessories first then we'll actually attach them all on the tank as well. First up you obviously get your 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, 6 millimeter BBs, power cord for the included battery which is in the tank, heaps of cool stuff in here, one set of tools, tow shackles, commander, set of rear mud flaps, double sided tape, best set of track link, jack with the included brackets and the two screws, antenna, two transmitter sticks that just push in like that and like that for the separately applied tow ropes and one thing I do like about the uh, Henlongs now they individually paint a few of the parts so as you can see here these parts that are timber or I think they're for the barrel cleaning rods you can see they're in like a brown color for timber and everything else is separately uh, painted and you can always add these like a steel color to uh, mimic actual tow cables. Here we have another bag here now in this bag you get these little hubs that go over the uh, screws so you don't see them. Nice touch looks more realistic with these on. And we can't forget the earmuffs. Then we also get a simple instruction sheet just going over the controls and how to uh, turn it on and off and add the battery into the tank itself. 
Don't worry about that now. I'll show you once I put the battery in and we get it up and running. Last but not least, we have a set of decals or decals. A cardboard tiger practice here where you'll be shooting at your own tank because that there is a King Tiger Porsche turret as well. And a pretty comprehensive instruction manual. Basic do's and don'ts like don't shoot it in people's eyes or at pets. Basic instructions. It's good, keeps you out of trouble. And this is important where all those extra uh, parts go. Now that's enough of that. Let's get all this uh, cool stuff on the tank. As you can see, when you put all those caps in, it looks so much more realistic. Very nice. Can't forget the Commander's earmuffs. There we go. So once all the accessories are put on, it looks awesome. And you would not think that it is priced that it is. It's 116 scale, it's BB firing, it does have a smoke unit at the back, and you know, it just looks awesome, looks like a huge model. So that's very impressive. So without a doubt, the King Tiger is definitely my favorite tank of all time. Now the Tiger II, is a heavy tank and it was for the second world war now the tiger 2 was a successor to the tiger 1 tank it was designed in 1943 um, the designers were henschel and sons Krupp. it was produced between 1943 to 1945 and only 492 were ever built the porsche design which you see here or the early turret total weight was 68.5 tons the later design with the henschel turret was 69.8 tons so a little bit heavier now the whole length was 7.38 meters the total length, including the gun, was 10.2. The width was 3.7. Height of three and a crew of five. One commander, one gunner, one loader, one radio operator, and one driver. Now, one of the biggest features of this tank and what made it so deadly is the massive gun. It was 8.8 centimeter KWK 43. Pretty much could pierce any enemy uh, armor. And if you saw one of these, your enemy tank you will definitely want to be out of there quick smart. Now another massive feature of this tank was the, how thick the armor was. It was uh, protected by 100 to 185 millimeters of armor at the front, which is crazy thick, but that also had its disadvantage of being so heavy. Now the engine was a V12 Maybach HL230 P30 gasoline uh, motor, 700 horsepower, and roughly 515 kilowatts. And of course, it had the legendary torsion bar suspension. But the turret you see here is the Porsche design. And as you can see, it is very rounded at the front. During production, this was difficult to manufacture and costly. And also, it was a shot trap. If anything did get into the front here, a shot could get lodged and cause the whole turret to malfunction or knock out the tank. So with that in mind, the more popular or the common production turret, which is known as the Henschel turret, was made. It's more simplified and it was significantly thicker on the flat face and didn't have any shot trap um, as the Porsche one did. Now a little closer look around the tank and as you can see the tracks are plastic and are all the road wheels and majority of the tank as well. The tank does have individually spring uh, suspension here which is nice it's not torsion bar it's just traditional style spring on a suspension arm but it does work very well and you can adjust these springs with aftermarket ones as well here's the idler wheel it does not seem to be adjustable so if you want to uh, add uh, track tension or slacken it off or whatever you have to add or remove a track link that's why you have the spares like i said previously the camo is quite nice and you do have a lot of detail which is excellent to see you have the like the score marks of the steel here on the cut face you do have some weld seams as well around the tank which is awesome to see nuts and rivets and all that kind of bolts all that kind of good stuff you have the front light and the front machine gun here 
does move around. Now here's another example of the steel there. It's not smooth, it's got like a nice rough coating to it which looks more realistic. The two hatches here do not move but they do have nice detail and you see that weld seam running around the tank here as well. Now the tools are very nice as well. They are separately painted so they've got like a, a timber colour, you've got the colour of the tank here and you've got the steel colour which is you know that black colour. But it's nice to see that it's all individual and not just one colour makes a big difference. Now I love the Tiger tank without these fenders but uh, on this tank they are applied and you cannot get them off. You could cut them off but it takes some work to uh, to do that so they do look still looks nice with them on. Now the back of the tank is very nicely detailed as well. You have all the accessories here, you have the light at the back here, obviously it doesn't work but at least it's there. The jack block, the rear, the rear uh, flaps here work, the exhaust stacks and they do work as you can see. Smoke will emit from them but um, just to let you know, with the tanks from Banggood, it does not include smoke fluid, but that is easily accessible on the internet. Bolt and nut uh, detailing there looks very nice, and you have a separately applied jack. I need to do that up a little bit tighter, but as you can see, it is all there. Even this hinge here is replicated as well. In real life, this would fold to the side to accommodate the uh, transport tracks, which were much thinner, so they could actually narrow the width of the whole tank. Now the vents and everything is in the right place. These hatches do not open, same as engine hatch, but the detailing looks quite good and very acceptable. Like I said before, considering the price, you could buy a, a Tajan Pro or a Tamiya tank, but they cost a lot more. Now at the top of the tank, you have these two hatches that are fully uh, working. They open, they have minor detail inside. That's on off switch for the airsoft unit. And this one here is where you load your BBs up. And this one is spring loaded, which is very nice. Lift it up push around and it locks. Now the bottom of the tank is where you'd access the battery and the on and off switch and it does have some minor hatch detailing here as well which is cool. Uh, included with the kit is a 7.4 volt 2 cell 1800 milliamp hour Lion battery and you charge it via this balance lead with a supplied kit uh, charger or you can use any hobby grade charger if you wish but it's there to get you out of trouble. You should get roughly 15 to 20 minutes run time with this battery. Okay, so I'll give you a quick uh, demonstration of the controls. There'll be further videos of it driving around, so please stay tuned for those. But once you plug the battery in and turn it on, you'll notice that the front light there is flashing. So all you need to do on your controller is push this little button here. It's like a lock. And as you can see, that is the engine noise and it moves with the throttle. As you can hear, it increases. But for this demonstration, I'll just turn it down. You have this volume switch here. You just push it like that. Then I'll just put it all the way down like that so you can hear me. Down here you have certain functions. This is for the front machine gun there. That's for that gun. As you can see, the red LED. This one here, the K. It's for your main cannon. Like that. This left stick controls the turret and it is proportional. You push a little bit, it'll move slowly. Push it all the way, it'll go quicker. There we go there. You push down on this and the gun will cycle up and down. As you can see, just like that. There is a smoke button here as well. If you push this, you'll hear the motors running in the background. You don't want to run into too much of that oil, but it will start to admit smoke if you had the oil in there. Now, if you want the BBs to work, you, there's a switch up here, turn that on, and if you push and hold up this, you'll hear that mechanism work like that. If you turn that off and push up, nothing happens. To activate that cannon movement, you push this bottom right button now, and it'll give you that recoil. Yes, it's not realistic, but you can't do much, it's still on the tag regardless. So to drive it around, you use this right stick here. Push slowly forward, as you can see it'll creep along. Push quickly, it'll go much faster. It's proportional control. Turn it to the left like that, it will do a pivot spin. Same as to the right. But if you kind of go forward and turn, one track will stop or skid steer and you can navigate where you want to go. Pretty fun and once you get the hang of it, it is very uh, addictive. But this tank is so big, it's hard for me to even turn on this table.
Can I do it? Can I do it? There we go. Awesome stuff, but like I said, I'll definitely do some more videos driving around outside. And also showing you the BB and how actual powerful it is. And to shut it off, you just push this button again. And you hear it just wind down. So to remove the top hole to the bottom hole, there are eight screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, and two sneaky ones just here. So I'll undo all those, pop the top off, and show you what makes these tick. Okay, now once those eight screws are undone, you can easily just lift off the top hole. And there we have the inner guts of a Henlong tank. Now all 116 tanks look very similar to this inside. As you can see here, we have our two gear boxes. We have one for the left and right. And as you can see, there are many gears. That's to ratio it down. We have two electric motors. And this one here has a brass pinion and all plastic gears. But like I said, before in the unboxing in the beginning, on the side of the box, you can get upgrade gear box. You can get zinc alloy, which are a bit softer or a bit harder than plastic, but then you can get the black steel ones, which are very hard and you won't have any problems with stripping out the gears. Because if, with plastic gears, you want to go in too deep of grass in case you do strip them out. Here we have the speaker, which is for the engine sounds and the cannon and machine gun and all that kind of stuff. So this is the brain that makes everything tick. It's all connected, everything works through this unit here. Here we have the smoke generator, and to fill that up, you just simply put a nozzle down here with your smoke fluid, and it will drip into the reservoir here, and then that is ready to go. Don't ever run that dry because you could burn out that element. Now this is the older version RX-18 board. The newer one is out, and that was in the Tiger one that I recently reviewed. It has two sound sets, it does sound much better, and it also, for the gun raises and lowers, doesn't have to cycle through. You can just go up or down on the transmitter. So that's uh, much better, but it doesn't cost too much, and it's all plug and play. You can just get the new one and plug everything back in. Take five minutes to change it out. Now, up top, we have our rotation motor here. There's a small gear in here, which attaches to this one, and it rotates the turret left and right. We have our lights for the LED for the machine gun and for the front headlight here. A small circuit board connected to the RX-18 board. Now I've disconnected from the bottom board so you can see. Just in here we have our turret elevation motor. It's like a gear that worms around and just goes up and down. It just cycles through. And here in this big yellow unit is the BB firing mechanism. These are pretty good and the later ones are quite reliable. You can upgrade them with different springs to make them go, I think, roughly about 25 meters, which is pretty far. But even the stock setup is quite nice. So that's inside the Henglong King Tiger Tank. Very similar to the Yag Panther, to the Tiger one I've recently done as well. They all share the same like DNA, you could say just different quality components inside. One thing I forgot to mention while I, while I was talking about this barrel, it is aluminium, which is very nice. I do like to see some metal in this tank. Well, that about wraps it up for this video for the Henglong King Tiger or Tiger 2 tank, 116 scale BB firing beast. Any questions, please leave them down below and answer them ASAP. So that's it guys, Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24 seven. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.